Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 70. This episode is Seamstress, Cosplayer, Whiskey Aficionado, Jedi Manda. She is awesome, and equally as talented. We talk about uh, the Kentucky Derby, because she's actually uh, from Kentucky and lives there. Uh, We talk about whiskey, of course. Uh, We talk about how she had actually learned to make costumes and all that stuff and build her craft before she even got into cosplay, which is a a really interesting story. Um, We talk about her making costumes for theater and whatnot. And her 9 to 5 is actually uh, uh, wig making. She makes wigs uh, for Santas and stuff, which is really cool. So she actually breaks down that process, which I had no clue of prior to this. Um, And, of course, we talk about her first cosplay. We cover her Queen Amidala, which is phenomenal. If you haven't seen her Queen Amidala yet, do yourself a favor. And then you're going to have to do a double take because it looks screen accurate. It's amazing. Uh, We talk about her Wonder Woman and her, uh, uh, I want to say issues with it, even though it looks amazing, but, you know, artists. Uh, We talk about her Anastasia. We talk about competition. All that stuff. Uh, she was just so much fun to talk to. So, let's get to it. Here is the interesting podcast, episode number 70, with Jedi Manda. Theme song time. is you have no idea <laughs> actually wait no you do have an idea you have a podcast on it yeah i mean maybe <laughs> I, I have a taste i have a taste of it. yeah <laughs> it's, it's tough it's tough but there's there's this bit uh in atlanta i think it's season two where they talk about florida man and mm-hmm. he he talks about how florida man is like a real person and he's like florida <laughs> man it's like what did he call himself it's like he's the johnny Appleseed <laughs> of like misinformation and crime or whatever it was and he just talks about <laughs> how the nobody knows what he looks like. They just know he's like a, a you know, 30 plus year old white male who does strange crimes. It's like Florida man beats a flamingo to death. Florida man breaks oh into God. delivery room of ex-girlfriend. Like <laughs> crazy weird that stuff. Is, that is so true. I have some friends from Florida and they always tell me the weirdest stories of headlines about what people do down there. It's yeah. so weird. It, it's got to be the humidity, right? You know, we have pythons it's the, now. <laughs> it's the, oh, God, no. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but you're in Kentucky? I am in Kentucky, the good state of horses and bourbon. <clears throat> there you go. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big Jim Beam fan myself. So, well okay, done. yeah. It's yeah, cheap. Yeah. It's, it's cheap, and uh, that's who I am. Uh, so cool. That's good. <laughs> it's fine. I don't think it's I, fine. I don't think I've been to Kentucky. What is Kentucky? It's like? great. It's a great state. I personally really love Kentucky. Um, it's it's kind of like in the middle of everything mm-hmm. as far as like, especially with conventions, I can try, I can, you know, drive to pretty much anywhere without having to fly sure. within reasonable distance. And it's really nice. But yeah, I'm, I live in Louisville, which is the biggest um, city here in Kentucky. So we have, we have all kinds of stuff. We got the Kentucky Derby. We got bourbon. I mean, it's, it's always awesome here. I, I love it. And it's, I wish we had more seasons. Sometimes <laughs> all only lasts for like two weeks, and then it's just winter instantly. So we have crazy weather. Sure. But other than that, it's pretty, it's pretty great. It's just it's hot right here now, but sure, you know, it, it'll soon get colder. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll play it by maybe. Hey. Man, are you are you from there, or do you just moved in? Yeah, now yeah. There? Nope, cool. born, born and raised. <laughs> right on, right on. Have you? Yeah. It's a dumb question. Have you been to the Kentucky mm-hmm. Derby? I have been. I have gone probably. I haven't been in the past three years because typically I also live right next to Churchill Downs. So mm-hmm. usually when I when it's Derby season, I'll throw a party or I'll go. In oh, the nice. past couple of times, I've just had people over and it's been so much nicer. Sure. <laughs> because yeah, I mean it's it's within walking distance. So if I want to go, I can go. Sure. But it it all relies on one thing and that's called the weather and if the weather is not ideal it is absolutely miserable because 
us average schmoes only get the infield, which is like general admissions ticket, mm-hmm. and it's outside, and there's no place to sit. And Derby is a full day event, and you also dress up. And so if you're not in something comfortable or in, you know, a place where you can actually sit down, Derby is pretty much a two-hour event for you. Ooh, unless man. you're unless you're just drunk AF, and then it can last <laughs> a day, but you won't remember anything. That's right. You can do that anywhere, really. Yeah, I I actually I love bringing people up here for it, but honestly, the the locals go to what's called Thurby, which is Ooh. just races on Thursday because spring meet happens a week before Derby starts, and so they just run races all up and through Derby, and then they cut for spring meet. And then there's a break, and there's fall meet, so you'll get to see horses running. Where it's not you're watching the Derby event, sure, but you're being the same experience. So wow. it's a local. Mm-hmm. Those are the best kinds. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole week is the whole that whole week of Derby. It's open, and you can just go anytime. And it's cheaper to go earlier, earlier, except on like Oaks or Derby, where it's very expensive to go. Mm-hmm. And you can actually get a seat and have fun, enjoy horse racing in general, without having to just see the two minute race on sure. Saturday. Sure. Yeah. And do you have like giant hats? Is that a real thing? We have giant hats. Yes. Um, yes, it is a thing, and people do really actually go all out. Um, yes. Typically, the past couple of years I've gone, I've made my hat and my outfit because it's just how I do. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you either go really classy or you go just outrageous. <laughs> and I've seen some utterly outrageous ones, and I've seen some really nice ones, but, you know, it's, and, and it's, both, guys, it's both guys and gals, so everybody wears a hat. Sure. Everybody dresses up, and if you don't, you just you're missing out. It's a whole it's an experience. It's not just a sporting event. Sure, that's awesome. It's like you mm-hmm. you, you either go royal wedding or Mardi Gras. You know that's the spectrum. Uh, you are <laughs> that is so true. And the infield is way more Mardi Gras mm-hmm. because it's just it's it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. It's it's fun to go if you have a lot of people and you're a little kind of drunk because it's just, it's, it's expensive, but it's hot, but it's fun if there's a lot of people, but there's really no place to sit. And if you're dressing up and it's hot outside, so, but people get really crazy in the infield. And yeah. <laughs> you have a, if you want to get nutty, you go there, but also it's really nice because I've, I've seen Derby from the Millionaire's Row block. I've seen it with celebrities. I've been everywhere in Churchill just because I know people. Sure. It's just it's it spoils you once you get like the really 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 nice seat. Yeah, exactly. And the next year you're dumped in the infield or you're <laughs> at the backside, and it's it's funny. Sure, sure. Once you've once you've tasted the paradise, you're like, mm, this was way oh, more yeah. fun before. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Our suite had free food, uh, free drinks. I mean, it was an insane year, and like celebrities were everywhere. And then the next year, right after that, I was in the back lot, which is the horse stable area which is actually a really <laughs> cool area it kind of smells a little but you get used to it yeah. but that's where you see all the horses before they get laid out into the paddock and onto the race so you kind of see a back behind the scenes and it's a little more calm and people are less stuffy food's a little better there actually you that's, that's how it goes stuff. it's like fancy uh-huh. fancy food fried food is always better you know yeah oh yeah and everyone does a buffet style it's pretty good that sounds awesome <laughs> it's an experience to say the least there you go. That's a pretty cool thing to have, you know. The, yeah. People have their local sort of thing, and yours is, you know, the Kentucky Derby. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's it's a big freaking deal. The um, we have a festival that runs for about two and a half weeks leading up to it, and everyone's just sloshed for two weeks. It's it's actually a great yeah, school. Yeah, there you go. No place to work. It's it's a wonderful way to bring in springtime. Wow, I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm way into it. What's what's the typical drinks of choice in this type of event? Um, always the mint julep. Um, oh. The mint julep is the drink of the Derby. However, I'm a bourbon snob, there and you go. <laughs> the mint juleps that are served at Churchill Downs are terrible <laughs> <laughs> because they have to make them on such mass quantities that mm-hmm. they actually use a mix um, of of mint simple syrup with bourbon already in the bottle and so the quantities aren't the best mm. and they use too much ice so it melts in the water 50 cc it's just it's awful so the best place to have mint juleps are not at churchill Down. <laughs> wow see these are the insider yeah. tips people need to know oh yeah and they're really expensive but you get to keep the glass so there you I guess go. that's cool yeah you get a little yeah. souvenir at least 
Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and they're they're fun. Mint juleps are great, and they're very very boozy because it's just mint, sugar, and bourbon and ice. That's it. I'm just shaking. I, I oh, like all of those shaking. things. It's wonderful if you can get one made right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> fair, yeah. fair. I would expect somebody from Kentucky to be about mm-hmm. their bourbon. I am. I'm very much about it, and I am a snob, and it's fine. If it's it's fine to be a snob from here. Exactly. Except when I go outside the city for conventions and I try to order a bourbon drink and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. And I'm like, ah, flash my Kentucky license. Yeah. And like, I'm from the state. You give me what I say. Yeah. <laughs> you pull out your derby hat that's collapsible. Do you see what this means? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you see what this is? I have years. That's right. been there. <laughs> you're like, this is called standards. Then you just walk out. Standards. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm like, what can I get in a handle? For fifteen dollars, oh, okay. Because <laughs> you know, well, I'm, you're I'm right. In you're right. If you chose, if you chose Jim Beam, that's, yes. that's 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 the good bourbon of the area. I have a ton of other recommendations if you want to branch out of your fifteen dollar with a handle. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to have class, is that what you're saying? If you want to have a little class, <laughs> I can tell you about it. <laughs> but as long as you're drinking, you know, Jim Beam, we're we're happy. Although the majority of bourbon labels are all from this area, so it's honestly just all the same. That's true. Well, it's mm-hmm. not not to the distinguished palate. Oh, know. it is not to the distinguished palate, but <laughs> Fifteen dollar a bottle with the handles are taste very similar to the other fifteen dollar bottles with the handles. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. I just got married this year, and uh, one of my groomsmen. Thank you, thank you. More a testament to my wife's patience than anything I did. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of my groomsmen had a whiskey sour, and I'd never had one before. Okay, and, yeah. And now I have those a lot. Yeah, that's, that's my go to now. You get them made, made um, at the bar, and they use egg whites. Uh, you know, I've heard about that. I can't remember. Delicious. It's really good. <laughs> Go to a really good, like a place that that has a good cocktail program, and ask them to make one, and you and you watch them make it. It's really cool. Really cool. That... Yeah, yeah. Sours they use egg whites as a binder for the for the for the cocktail. My boyfriend's a bartender, so we. Oh, we... sweet. Cocktail snobs. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I'm into it. You know, whatever you're into, you need to be into it. Yeah. I always like hearing about things that I have like no concept of, and then to hear people who do know things about it and to learn, and uh, yeah. that's that's why I made a show about it. But <laughs> but go. that's cool though. That's cool. I I always thought bartenders were the coolest growing up because I was like, you're basically real life potion masters. Um yeah yeah he's he's like an alchemist. That's what I tell him. Oh a alchemist, lot. that's a much better word. <laughs> yeah, it's like what do you want? What do you want to feel? Give me a second. Here, please. Some people he can work off of just adjectives, or if you just say, "I want something fresh and citrusy," he'll give you a drink that is fresh and citrusy. That's so cool. Yeah, he's I'm, good. I'll keep him. <laughs> I like it. Uh, there you go. Yeah, you locked that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and I, I love that you mentioned where you're at the Kentucky Derby. You're like, you know, there's a bunch of hats. I make my own because that's how I roll. So I, yeah. I, it's, I mean, it's hard for me to buy my own. It really is. It was very difficult for me to do that. Well, I've seen your quality, and I don't blame you. Uh, well, thank you. What a, so did you start a, a lot of people that I've talked to, like specifically cosplayers and whatnot, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of them start with art first and then yeah. change mediums to fabric and stuff like that. Did you start <coughs> off like sewing and learning that, or did you start in art? or Where did this creative I, thing come from? 100% started in art. I went to school um, for fine art painting. What? And, um, yeah, so I'm a tr- – I'm a I guess classically trained painter, which is bullshit. I just went to art school. <laughs> but um, I have the degree that says I am, so I can say that if I want. I'll give it to uh, you. <laughs> sick. But um, in my degree, my subject of paintings were women and their clothing. Oh. And and it was all about how a woman wears her clothes, what her clothes says about that person. And uh, frankly, I, I, I've always liked fashion, but and costumes when I was in high school, but I never really thought about making them. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was cool, but I never owned a sewing machine. I was just like, yeah, that's neat. But, um, and I've liked costumes. But it wasn't until my sophomore year of college that I was running out of like clothes to dress my models in or doing something that was interesting because I was becoming more increasingly interested in costumes mm-hmm. as a subject for my paintings because 
they're way more interesting than just a t-shirt and jeans. Right. So my mentor was like, you know, why don't you take some costume design classes, not necessarily sewing, but like learn the design aspect and then maybe you can form something from that. So I was like, okay. And I, when I was in high school and early college, like I've never been interested in theater. I've been interested in entertainment and film and some theater, but like I really hated theater at high school. Sure. The kids that were there, I just couldn't stand them. Our, us art kids were different than the theater kids. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> that's how it goes. All of our exactly, all of our um, costume design classes were in the theater program, and oh. so I was like, okay, well, I'll take some of those as long as I don't have to be in shows. Like, yeah. <laughs> I do not. I don't want to do that. So I was allowed to take through my mentor kind of working with our theater department and them seeing the subject of my paintings I was allowed to take theater classes without having to be in actual shows so I could work in the costume shop and 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 learn to sew and do all of this without being a theater major which was awesome and right up my alley and so once I took some costume design classes um I was like this is awesome I like design work well now I want to make it and then they also offered sewing classes and advanced sewing classes and from that just kind of gave me the skill and I was like okay I think I'm actually pretty decent at this and um then I actually was like you know I think I want to get a job and so I ended up getting a job as a tailor worked myself through college wow. as, a, as a tailor and that's where I got my skill set with my design set and right as I graduated from college I got a job in a costume shop in our local ballet um company here in town and then pretty much in between that time was when I started making costumes for myself Mm -hmm. because I got really tired of dressing dancers and (laughs) actors and me not being able to wear my cool stuff and I was like what's this and so I figured out what cosplay was I'd say around 2011 2012 Mm -hmm. and I was like well why didn't I know about this because I've been dressing myself up for movie premieres and Halloween for years and I just didn't know of any other place I could do that and it was open and okay Mm -hmm. and so I just went to my first local tiny comic con and realized people were in costume and was like why am I not in costume (laughs) and it's it's so weird because I came into cosplay with a skill set of professional like I was already making professional costumes for professional dancers right that's what you do just got to do my measurements now and then (laughs) i kicked the door in on the cosplay world i was like here's my stuff boom let's do this right right kind kind of my weird foray into costuming versus people who are just like i started making making you know pillowcases and i'm like well i started hemming bridal gowns (laughs) right no that's crazy and how it all like led up to each other and that makes a lot of sense because i've been i've been a, I've been a follower of your social media for quite a few years now and thank you, uh, thank you for sharing your art and your <laughs> your sketchbooks are stuff you see in like behind the scenes of movies like oh this was our concept design for this i was like she's just drawing these with her yeah. hand yeah right? yeah and Crazy. that's that's college that's that's my design school that and my and my fine art background because i was already doing that not even cognitively thinking that I would make it for myself, just making it in general for possible models, possible dancers and, and, and actors and actresses. And just that part was easy. It was actually putting it into three dimensional form. That was like hard. <laughs> sure. That's insane. Yeah. So you're, you're making these costumes and stuff for this, for this theater and whatnot. Was it, what was it that interested you? Was it making the costumes for the production itself or the costume making that is where you're, you're, you're um, in it was it. both. Mm-hmm. It was honestly both. Um, I started out doing costumes for college theater, mm-hmm. which is um, the, the shows are chosen by the professors within mm-hmm. the college program. And bless it, the years that I had to design shows were the most boring type of theater. <laughs> I mean, it was like modern and modern and modern. I'm like, someone give me Chicago. Like, let me do a 20 scene something. That's and right. so we did, oh, we did some, uh, much ado about nothing, a Shakespeare, and we were able to flip it into the 1970s, which our costume shop was just so happy to be able to do something with flair. Sure. We had we had very artsy directors that loved <laughs> modern, and it just, sucked our brains out in the costume shop because we all are like feathers and glitter and purple and shiny and woo you know right. 
so Art. in college it was definitely way more um constrained versus when i got out of college i started making costumes for myself which mm-hmm. were just basically my appreciation to the fandom that i was into at the time which has been star wars and other random here here and there things but um from that actually i got my job for the ballet <clears throat> from my cosplay portfolio and oh, the shows that i worked at the ballet i of course didn't have any say over which ones they were however dance versus modern theater is obviously going to be a little more frou-frou and flamboyant and sure the making of those type of costumes were really awesome. And then to see it on stage was, was also, was also great, but definitely to answer the question more or less, it, it just depends. It depends on what I'm given, but it's, it is about kind of the journey and then to see it on stage sure. um, versus the actual show itself. That makes sense. That makes sense. I also like that you're like a, a real like creative type person. Cause you're not just sewing. You're not just building these costumes, uh, not just drawing and whatnot. You've done some pretty sweet special effects makeup as well. Yeah, that's been new. <laughs> yeah, how are you liking that? I'm loving it. I took one makeup class in college because what? I could. And, one yeah, class. I took one makeup class, just one class, wow. and learned kind of the basics of what latex prosthetics and you know corrective makeup and old age makeup, like basic theater mm-hmm. um, makeups. And then I just read a whole lot about it, and I've watched so many youtube videos and behind the scenes stuff on movies and just read up and just kind of just from scratch kind of developed how to do that um Dude. i'm very comfortable with face with paint because of college and what i went through as an artist and so doing it on myself is not as much different as doing it on a canvas or fabric sure but doing more three-dimensional sculpting special effects stuff is all new to me yeah and it's been exciting to figure that out i love like body painting but i really like i don't know like my burnt anakin all of that three-dimensional yeah. sculpting weird wound stuff that was really cool so i'm learning how to sculpt yeah <laughs> you went from you went, you went from painting fine art to becoming the fine art Ah, yes, I like that. That's right. <laughs> add that. When you're learning special effects makeup, you're like, ah, another skill to add to my collection. Honestly, uh, it's as it's as uh, narcissistic as that sounds, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and another bullet point on the resume. That's right. But, uh-huh. no, I, I really do love special effects makeup. And like, I, I hate saying, well, if the bottom drops out on the cosplay bubble, what do I have to lean on? You know? Sure. Um like I would, I would love to get some kind of job or work more into the special effects makeup realm. And I also, my actual job, my nine to five that I actually make money, I make wigs. And so what? I've already got like, yeah, the whole person. I can make the whole person. <laughs> I do. I make, I make wigs you for. Make uh, wigs? A, mm-hmm. How? So how, how does that work? How? Explain <laughs> well, this to you me. Take hair. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with hair. All it right. Starts with hair. But uh, my Anastasia um, hair that I'm wearing in all my photographs and videos, that's not my real hair. That's a wig. What? And, um, mm-hmm. and so I've been working with this company locally for um, – I've been working with them just wearing their wigs for photos and jazz since 2015. And they hired me last year as a full-time wig designer and creator. And basically it's it's exactly as it, as it seems. It's – we take um, a measurement from a person's head and make them a wig. Now we necessary we specialize in cosplay, historical reenacting, film, TV. Not necessarily like fashion wigs. Mm-hmm. Um, they're different, and especially the way we make them. Um, oh. We are definitely way more of a wig creator than a stylist and hairdresser. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow. but um, yeah, that's, that's what we do. Our bread and butter is actually Santa Claus and holiday wigs. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yeah, wow. yeah. So the, it's re- this is people hair you're talking about, like locks for love is... type stuff. Um, like, no, not, not necessarily. No, yeah, because that's like the that's the very first question that everyone asks me when I'm like, "This is what I do." They're like, "Oh, you make wigs for cancer patients," and I'm like, "No, oh, yeah, <laughs> I no, make no, no. wigs <laughs> for uh, Santa Clauses and that's your right. mall Santas." Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like it's like it's slightly different clientele. 
slightly different clientele. Our wigs are are made to be worn for a special thing, um, not necessarily for everyday wear. Oh, okay. And the material so is here, and there's like a. Expl- mm-hmm. I've never talked to anyone who's ever made wigs before, so I'm fascinated by yeah. the process. Does it start with a it's, net and you punch it, or break this down? So, for me. what it does is that if if you are you're like I need a Jon Snow wig, I'm a huge fan of Jon Snow. I want to be like Jon Snow. Mm-hmm. Um, we will take a head wrap of your head, and it oh. is a completely custom wig to your hairline. So we basically trace your head um, with saran wrap, and then wrap it tape around it, and draw out your hairline. Remove that um, little cap and then put it on a wig head, pat it out to the size. And then we have a special kind of netting that we sew around that, the head and um, a special kind of lace that we attach to that that forms the cap itself. And then we have special wig um, tying tools that basically we just hand tie in all of the hair into those tiny little cells within the netting. Wow. And then style. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, it's definitely it's an art that's been around for way longer than people think. Sure. Um, do it very traditionally, like they used to do it back in the you know the eighteenth, seventeenth uh, century. Mm-hmm. Um, versus like commercialized wigs that are just made from weft. Sure. Um, with long strands of hair that are just sewn onto a stretchable wig cap that anybody can do in any manufacturing. Ours are definitely like custom using traditional methods way more pricey than your average art wig <laughs> oh i believe it i believe it how long mm-hmm. does the average wig take um the average wig takes from like head tracing to styling four to five days depending on what it is wow. um we do facial hair beards they all take different different times but typically typically that is that is the process and that's and that's as, as like at the nine to five hour sure you know? it's not 24 hours yeah. But um <laughs> yeah. it's like we make, we make Santa Claus wigs. We don't work for him. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> wow, Sometimes that's crazy. That. Yeah, so I have wigs down, I have makeup and costumes. I'm I'm a one woman show. That's right. That's right. You you don't need anybody. That's what I'm talking I don't need about. Anybody. I don't know how to make shoes though. I could use a cobbler. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have zero interest in learning how to make shoes. <laughs> Until one day you're going to see the right shoe and be like, hmm, go home, make a sketchbook, yes. and then you're going to be like, yes. hey, also got shoes, head to toe now. And that'd be awesome, but I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a whole separate thing, shoes. That is. Wow. Yeah, they're they're way harder than it looks. It's, it, and I don't have the tools for it either. Yeah, it requires again. requires a whole different set of sewing. Oh, man. That's insane. Yeah, I've never talked to anyone who makes wigs. It seems like a very meticulous, like, it is. pinpoint. Like, I've seen behind the scenes of people making, like, the Chewy suits and, like, hair mm-hmm. punching for aliens in Star Wars. And, like, yeah, yep. time and time and time That's, and time. That is very similar. Like, the punching is, is for something that a person's not really going to go into. Right. Um, It's for, like, those aliens on Star Wars that are puppets. And it's for mm-hmm. Chewy suits that have an apparatus that you know, is like a helmet that goes on the person. Exactly. Um, because the, the latex and whatever fabric that is around that will take in and pull the hair. And it's not really meant to be, it's meant to be brushed, but also not heavily styled. Sure. Um, because ours is a, we tie it into the net mm-hmm. versus just pushing the hair into it. Sure. Man, that's, mm-hmm. do you have like a giant magnifying glass to see the tiny little holes to do these ties? Nope, you just bring the head close to your face. <laughs> oh, that's what, well, you did say you're doing it the same way. You did it back then. Yeah. Honoring tradition. Honoring tradition. I'm into it. <laughs> so <laughs> what was the, do you remember the first costume you made for yourself? Where you're like, this cosplay stuff sounds pretty cool. You know, it goes back and forth because I always, I always pinpoint my beginning cosplay days as in Derby City, Comic Con 2012. I was Kitana from Mortal Kombat 3. Oh, sweet. Um, I made our my two good friends. Um, I made their outfits. Uh, I made a Jade and Melina. We had a little group. It was awesome. Genius. However, that was my first a cosplay one because I wore it to a con. Uh-huh. But I will I will say before that, probably around 2010. I think I could be wrong on this, but then do you remember when they re released 
um, Star Wars Episode One in 3D. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. Well, I dressed up in full crossplay Darth Maul. Oh, sweet! So That's a good I idea. Kinda put that as my first cosplay. That's not Halloween. Right, and right. You're he, like, how do we define this? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's weird because, like I said, it was. I started out with having skill set to where I could just make any, not any costume, but enough to where I could learn from it. I mean, looking back at my Darth Maul outfit, it's not that great. But, you know, it was enough to where I can put it together and wear it. But mm. I only wore that the premiere of that, not to a con. So it's, it's either one of those, mostly Katana, because it was to a convention, which to me is, um, you know, associated with cosplay, but... Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. And it's also, like you said, it's a weird timeline because you were professionally making costumes before coming up upon cosplay. You're like, oh, this is a thing I've I've been doing for a very long time for exactly. productions. Yeah. So yeah, I can I can see how that would be difficult to be like. Uh, I guess we'll just say here. This looks about right. Yeah. And honestly, I felt I felt dumb not realizing that cosplay was a thing. And I. <laughs> I remember... I remember back in high school watching G4 channel, which I miss dearly. Oh, yeah. And Rest in peace. Olivia Munn going to San Diego Comic-Con. I remember always wanting to go to conventions, but mm-hmm. I don't know why I just never made that click of people wear costumes at these. This is what you do professionally. Right. <laughs> make that connection. Like, do go. Go do it. You know, I just I was always like, why didn't I know about this? It's just something that was out of sight, out of mind, but. Sure. Why Why wasn't it? I don't know. I think it's because I always thought cosplay was so more, less associated with anime and, and, and people that are really into anime, manga, Japanese life, not necessarily costuming for all genre of entertainment. Right, um, right. Makes sense. But when I, yeah, yeah. When I was just reading up on the internet about conventions, especially San Diego Comic Con and New York Comic Con when I was younger and seeing people competing in these outfits and wearing these outfits and it's not a japanese schoolgirl, you know yeah. i mean like hey, well, it is worldwide it's not just from japan sure you know, from japan but you know absolutely um, and, and in the last like um, five years or so it's gotten way more mainstream as well it's gotten so mainstream and i i look at it as a great thing absolutely personally. I, I think it's wonderful i don't see why people don't like it but i'm like agreed if it's not mainstream, we don't get more conventions. We don't exactly get certain sewing patterns in Joanne's. You know, I mean, like hundred businesses care about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. I love it. I, mean, I hope it the bubble doesn't bust. <laughs> same, Hopefully. same. And it's also cool to see, and especially now they're like competing. You know, and then the Heroes of Cosplay showed up, and then you're seeing mm-hmm. worlds and tournaments, and it, now that yeah. it's getting ubiquitous, it's like people are stepping their game up. All the time, oh, you know, and it's God, crazy, yeah. crazy. It, it's crazy, and I, I always try to tell people, because I get a lot of people asking me, you know, about competition and how much, you know, a game should I bring, and I'm like, well, it just it depends on your competition and, and your willing level to compete with. You know, I don't want to tell somebody who's completely new that wants to complete, you know, compete in, like, the Crown Championship, which is a worldwide one right. that I did earlier this year, and they want to do something crazy, and I'm like, well, I try to answer it as as, as soft as I can, because people, they want to be in the big leagues, they want to be, you know, they want to go crazy all out first, but I'm like, you really need to start small and work your way up, because competition's not for everybody, and it's very intimidating, and I'm a person that has competed my whole life for stuff sure. whether it's like just sports or art competitions or anything so i'm very used to it but i still get hella nervous oh yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's very hard it's not just the stage it's 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 the judging it's the preparing yourself to be judged it's the work in progress shots that you need to bring like it's a laundry list of stuff and so i always tell people you know start small work your way up watch the competitions see what people are bringing and then work your skill set up to that level exactly Um, i just i feel i feel so bad when when people you know they they try to compete at that level and they just they either nothing gets awarded to them or they don't even make it to a final round and then they're like well you know i'm done i'm it's one and done i can't do this with another i'm like no you need to try different competitions, try different levels of competition, try different judges, you know, 
Exactly. It's all about how you present yourself to the competition, not necessarily the competition itself. Exactly. And how you go in to compete as well. You know, it's like, are you entering the contest to go up and like, if you're, if, if your intent is to go out there and show your costume, more power to you. Mm -hmm. But just know Mm -hmm. if you're going in for the award, know what you're going in for and know what you're up against. And like, it's, it's a competition and there's obviously emotions involved and your art is there being put out. And if it doesn't work, by all means, go learn some more stuff and then come back. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely, oh, definitely, and and everybody, no matter what level they are at, they don't win all the time. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. they will lose. They will, you know, come in second or they'll win. You know, it's not like everybody that has a, a big outfit or the most rhinestone thing is going to win. Judges look for different stuff, and I mean, I've judged so many different types of conventions with different types of cosplays and what i look for is not necessarily what another judge looks for so it's it's a mixed bag um but i always tell people to research it as much as you possibly can first with your own eyes and through you know seeing other people do it before you attempt to dive in sure totally agreed mm-hmm. and, and, and mm-hmm. you know just go for it you know put yourself into it have fun yeah. if you're not having fun with it what's the point you know. exactly this is a fun this is a fun thing and i mean everybody goes through doubts of course especially if they're a creative or an artist of some sort which everybody that's in cosplay is yeah surprise yeah exactly you <laughs> don't <an> artist, say <laughs> you don't say and i'm just like you know um everybody has doubts and it's okay to be you know to look back at yourself and be like maybe i should step back or or you know this aspect of cosplay wasn't as fun um Versus another aspect of cosplay. I know a lot of people that really actually don't like going to conventions. They they would rather make the cosplay and have a photo shoot posted on the internet. You know, sure. And then I know people who are the exact opposite. Um, but that's what makes them happy. And that's what you need to find within exactly. this cosplay community, you know? A hundred percent. That's the thing. If, if you're not having fun dressing up in costume, what, do you, what are you doing? What are you, you doing? Know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Find something that you enjoy like, and then just do that. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen, I've heard and seen so many things about people just not having a good time or being a sourpuss, and I'm like, why are you here? Exactly. What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Are you doing this for awards? Because you need to go about it a little differently if that's the point. You here. need to go about it differently. Everyone yeah. in this community knows each other and talks. <laughs> I know, for real. That's the other crazy yeah. thing. I so I uh, in Florida. This would have been twenty. I don't even remember few few years back maybe four years mm-hmm. ago or so so i had just watched uh what is now my favorite animated series of all time avatar the last airbender yeah and my that. Uh, so good so my wife grew <laughs> up with it and i did not and so okay. she's like you need to watch the series i was like all right cool so i bought the box set on dvd and that's how long ago it was and then we oh. uh we we binge watched all that and i was like that is the greatest animated series i've ever seen and then I was like, I'm going to try this cosplay thing. And so I, I put together a Cabbage Merchant cosplay. Okay. Yes, and the Cabbage. Yeah. So, yes. So I would go around and I, I it, luckily, I mean, surprisingly, I ended up winning an award for it. But it wasn't that the costume was technically a crazy thing. It was the embodiment of the character and the show of it all. Yeah. But that's when I learned yeah. that you're absolutely right. There is definitely a community of cosplayers. And, mm-hmm. like, who you get to know. And, like, they, don't be sour about things because it, it does go around, as with any community. It, you know? It's yeah, like, it does. Cool. And it and it only – it just it hurts. It hurts the person. And as a creative, like, I know we are all – our creations are our babies. And oh, yes. And if they're not the best, you know, we don't like it or something like that. Mm-hmm. But – you you got to be able to take criticism no matter you you know no matter what format you're in but especially in competitions you're going to get criticism exactly Sorry. that's how, that's how art happen. grows you know yeah and it's not a bad thing unsolicited criticism however yeah. online <laughs> not good yeah. and that's a whole different ball game but that's right f uh, that noise <laughs> that was true but art school taught me how to accept criticism and and to be able to give it, you know, critically to where I'm not being like, your work sucks. <laughs> you know, I'm right. going to tell you how to improve it. And that's all that matters. Exactly. And then everybody wins in the end because you learn new yeah. skills, your costume steps it up, and then everybody has a good time. Exactly. I'm into it. 
I'm really into mm-hmm. it. Do you? What is the most difficult costume you've made thus far? Because you've got some crazy complicated things. Mm, most difficult. That's so strange because ooh, I would say it would have been Queen Amidala, mainly mm. because I did not know at all going into that outfit how to make the headpiece. Oh. With, with, some, with some of my outfits, like I feel very confident on certain aspects of them Mm -hmm. um but like for example with dr strange and anastasia i knew how to make those outfits i was i was fine i didn't really feel like there was going to be a huge hump to get over by just the sheer amount of labor that i'd be putting into it i know i'd be putting in time you know um but you knew what you were looking at i knew what i was looking at and Mm -hmm. and i researched it enough to where i felt confident going into it and um but with with Queen of Madala, that headpiece, I didn't, I don't have a huge sculpture or fabrication background. And that is all that is. That is 100% figuring out how to make something defy gravity. And yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a, that was a struggle. That headpiece took me a long time and I, I struggled with it. And I will say that's probably the most difficult one just because I did not know how to do that. And working through that process made me way more confident in my fabrication level sure um versus you know making something that's just strictly sewing based now i will say my wonder woman outfit bless her um <laughs> was way more difficult than i thought it would be mm-hmm. because i am not a foam smith and i will not accept that as a uh. as a term for myself <laughs> but i really wanted to make it and i was like i have to be wonder woman i have to right. and so i was like i'm gonna make it all out of foam because that looks easy yeah. so false <laughs> so 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 false i made that bodice twice and it was wow mm, and i still don't really like to wear it at all because i just feel uncomfortable in it because i'm so used to something out of fabric versus foam sure. and it's it's so funny compared to like other friends of mine how we all talk and they're foam fabricators, and they feel so comfortable with glues and Dremels and all this stuff. And I'm like the exact opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I hate glue, <laughs> and I hate Dremeling, and I hate all this. Give me fabric and cutting tools and a sewing machine all day. There you but go. I'd say those are definitely my most difficult because I just didn't understand the material or the process on how to do it when I was attempting it. But, hey, it worked out. I made it, and I got photos of it. And- there you go, we're, we're, and it looks awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I'm into it. Then, you, so, you, would you say that your Wonder Woman costume is your most uncomfortable to wear? Yes, 100. percent Yeah, one absolutely 100. percent Because I just I'm uncomfortable just in general with it because I'm used <laughs> to being, I'm used to being corseted. I'm used to being like tied into things or something being fabric on my body, and mm-hmm. Wonder Woman is completely foam. Uh, my skirt uh, is a foam touching me, and I just feel like I'm walking around with a barrel strapped around. <laughs> I, I I look badass, and I, you know, Wonder Woman's awesome, but like I just oh I hate wearing that thing, man. <laughs> You're like I'm inside of a tree trunk. <laughs> I, it, that's what I feel like. I I really do, and like my, my boots they squeak when I walk because the foam <laughs> hitting each other. And it's just, it's, it's not as badass as I thought I would be, but right. I like it and I'm happy that I wore it for reasons, um, but there you it's, go. It, it's retired. That's a, you got, you got good pictures of it. So, I mean, that's why we do I things. Did. And I would like to make, I would like to make another, I would like to make another shot at her outfit, but I would like to make a leather or something I'm a little more comfortable with. There you fabric, go. Leather, you know, versus foam and glue and <laughs> <laughs> Fair, fair. What 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 would you say your most comfortable costume to wear is? Mm, oh, that's tough because shoes are not comfortable. Ah, uh, fair. <laughs> it, all, it honestly comes down to footwear, and I don't. And it's it's just I don't wear heels all the time, and mm-hmm. any majority of my outfits, I'm in some sort of heel where it's like character heels for Anastasia and Amidala, mm-hmm. or Doctor Strange that has like boots that has a heel to it. Sure. Um. I will say probably, mm, I'm like going through in my head uh, what I have, which is a lot of cosplay. Good luck. Uh, it's a giant resume. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually right next to my uh, my room. I can just turn around and look. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating. You can't. <laughs> um, that's cheating. I will say, honestly, my most comfortable cosplay is one that I don't wear much, but is my underground favorite, uh, is my Lydia Dietz from oh, Beetlejuice. Makes sense. 
and that's, she's that's a it's, a, it's giant poncho with flats right <laughs> hair is really cool i mean it's super comfortable and i have such a soft spot for beetlejuice it's like the one cosplay that i've made that i know is not as crazy as my big ones mm-hmm. and doesn't get a lot of screen time Sure. But I secretly love her, love it, love it, and I will never give it away. But I'll try to wear it as much as I can. It's It doesn't travel well because the hair is a sculpture, but right. it's super fun. I love wearing that thing. I like that you, Beetle like, Juice. Beetlejuice is awesome. <laughs> I like that you sculptures have, like, become parts of the costumes because you got Queen Amidala's sculpture, you've got that sculpture. Uh, I'm assuming yeah. your Ahsoka is definitely sculpture, the head tail. Ahsoka is so much a sculpture. It's a big pillow on my head, and I have <laughs> It's so funny. I have to actually lift the mantra to like hear people. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's so weird. I felt like an idiot, but um, Star Wars Celebration, what Orlando? Uh, mm-hmm. Was that two years ago? Yeah, two years ago, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Early last year. Last year, year yeah. I can't. Oh uh-huh. man, I can't remember. It's hard. Um, I met Dave Filoni in in Ahsoka, mm-hmm. and what? Which was amazing. He came out of nowhere and flanked me from like the right side and was like, "Oh, you look amazing," and I was like. Um, hold on one moment, please, sir. <laughs> Let me, like, you just not start crying. Out. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, shit, you're the reason that I'm here. Um, so, but I was able to talk with them, but I had to end up lifting up my mantra, like, be like, what is it, Sonny? Can you say that to my ear? <laughs> he's right. like, oh, you can't really hear, can you? And I'm like, no, this is a giant pillow on my head. <laughs> right. I am muffled at best. <laughs> I am muffled. And so I was like, can you hear? Hear me? That's right. I love funny. you. It was a great interaction. It was a great interaction, a great little talk. He asked me about my outfit and he, the same question. He was like, Are you comfortable? And I flat out and I was like, No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Oh, and I said and I was just I said, reasons being like this is obviously not real head. You know, here's it's a pillow and and her armor is 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 funky and it's not you know the most comfortable thing but it was just it was kind of like a funny thing about it and he was like telling me give me pointers on my outfit and i was like this is fantastic what <laughs> that's cool Thank you. that was a highlight fair not gonna lie. fair mm-hmm. fair we have a we have a mutual friend in a uh, mckenna fellows call me snips oh, oh, yeah. oh my gosh she's, she's amazing she's She's the best Ahsoka. Yeah. So, uh, I hate wearing my Ahsoka next to hers. Yours so is good. great as well, is my point. Thank you. <laughs> when I think of Ahsoka cosplayers, it's always you two that pop into my head. Uh, so and it's, it's great. It's so weird because I really don't wear her that much. Of the Star Wars co- of the Star Wars characters that I personally identify with, it's not Ahsoka. Sure. I, I, made, I made Ahsoka because I wanted to challenge myself with trying to make that headpiece. And I made it, I think, right when she was announced in Rebels. Right. And so the hype was real. Yeah. And so I I really wanted to try to figure that headpiece out and I did and I recorded myself and post that tutorial on mm-hmm. YouTube, which a lot of people use and to make their Ahsoka and I think that's kind of why I get that association. But Yep. It's it's just it's kinda of funny because I'm like, I don't wear it that much really. It only takes one. <laughs> it's it only takes one, but I, I love seeing the Ahsoka cosplayers like come up to me and be like i used your tutorial to make my outfit and i'm like you look fantastic this is great like it warms my heart inside right when, when i'm able to when i'm able to share knowledge and people can a follow it and understand it Absolutely. and actually make a make a product that they're happy with exactly and that's something also that's really cool that uh the cosplayers mm-hmm. that do choose to share the knowledge is really cool uh yeah you know, got, like kamui cosplays like putting out books i'm like here's how to do foam stuff i was like that's cool as opposed She's- to like being closed off with your information yeah. right? it's cool i find it i find it that that's like it's one of the reasons why i cosplay is i love to share information and yeah. i i really like helping people figure something out or help them make it i don't like doing commissions i don't want to make it for them right. i want to help you get to that point because that's the whole level of learning as an artist is like you need to get over these humps and let me let me be your mentor let me help you out with it so i try my hardest to release as much information about how I'm making all of my outfits because that's what people really, they really care about. I mean, I'm here for the craftsmanship. I'm here for the craft and let me help you. (laughs) Right. Right. It's cool. And it's a, it's a lot of work. It's double the work because you're doing the work yourself, but to also catalog it and to share it. Mm -hmm. It's just good Mm -hmm. on you. I think that's cool. It's, it's really hard. Uh, I tried, I, 
I have, uh, with my YouTube channel, I try my hardest to post some sort of tutorial with some of my outfits to try to get information out there. Mm -hmm. But the problem is my outfits take months to make. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have, I've, I had to condense it a couple months ago, but I had a file on my computer of my entire recording of making Anastasia. Oh, God. And that's nine months of videoing. And I was like, I have to draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I need and an external so, hard drive now. <laughs> yeah. It, honestly, it was like two terabytes. It was huge. Oh, oh my God. And I was God. like, and it was, it was GoPro footage because that was like the only thing that I could find to keep, be able to keep up with the hours I was putting into it. And sure. I still haven't released it. I have tons <laughs> of this information, but I'm like, I don't even know how to composite this to tell people about it. I, <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> it's just there. It's it's, it's just stay, there. Just judging you from your computer. <laughs> That's why I've I've tried to do video. But videoing is it's so hard to catalog and put everything out there versus me taking photos of it, saving it, and then writing up like a blog post about it. That's what I would rather do, and I can get my information out easier through writing than sometimes through video. Sure. Fair. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and it's it's a good time for that kind of stuff too. Like we said, cosplay being mm -hmm. mainstream, there's definitely an audience. There uh, is an audience, and people really care about making it, which is awesome. Yeah, it's really cool, and it's to see like in the last like three years how it's become like a viable like way to make things with cosplay yeah. and to build it up, and like with the internet and with Instagram and with Patreon and like all these things, it's it's so fascinating to see how quickly. It's it's changing, and you know a lot of people like uh, are doing Twitch as well. It's amazing. It's mm -hmm. so, it's so cool to see that progress, and you do builds on Twitch as well that I've seen before. Uh, not Pretty anymore. Cool. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I used to. I used to Twitch and I uh, and my internet. It, it it came down to the internet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I really poor signal in my building that I live in, and I just could not get over that. And I just didn't have a good filming area, and it was yeah. It's, if I was going to yep. record anything, it'd be for YouTube. But Twitch was cool, and I love it, and I wish I could have. Yeah. Because I, that format is so neat, and especially it's new. You know, it's new, and people are interested in it. So getting into it as it's new really helps. You know, your your business or cosplay or however you want to promote it. But oh yeah, it's it's, it's a whole other yeah yeah. It's crazy also because like Twitch is a whole another animal that you invest things in and you build into and build onto. You know, come in with little like emojis. Like we have another mutual friend, uh, Danica, really good friend to Danica. She's my favorite, and oh. she's hitting Twitch hard, and she's amazing at it. And you know, the, with the emojis and just like all these things, and I'm like, wow, it's so cool to see these people take these new things like cosplay and these competitions and Twitch and YouTube and tutorials like you're doing, and just to see it grow in real time. It's kind of yeah. neat. It's it's neat and it's exciting. Um, yeah. It's it's also really hard to keep up with. <laughs> oh my God! Tell me about it. <laughs> Sheesh. It's very hard to keep up with. I try my hardest, and it's sometimes the only thing I can do is an Instagram story post, and that's about it. <laughs> exactly. I, a, social media, I'm horrible at because, like, I here's a potato. I guess I found that. <laughs> Got to post something today, you know. <laughs> yeah, social media is all about finding your audience and exactly. seeing what they want and posting that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Supply and demand. You know, uh -huh. it's it's economy 101. If you look down to that at, at its at its core, you know that's yep. exactly all it is. Exactly. And if you know, if I could not have a, a Facebook, I would not have a Facebook. Yeah. Just have <laughs> ones. But as a cosplayer, and especially someone who who like I, I would like to, you know, push myself into a not a career level because I like my job and I like what I do, but I like to promote myself through social media, and I yeah. feel like I have to have it all. But also, once you have it all, you're like, this is a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to keep up with. Dude, anytime it's time to promote a podcast, I'm like, oh, God, okay. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Uh, uh, somebody just listen yeah. to it and tell your friends. <laughs> yeah. It's so much I deleted, work. I deleted Snapchat a couple months ago, and I, it was the best feeling ever. I, I was like, <laughs> I actually have to let one go. <laughs> I had sna I had Snapchat for like three months and I was like why why do I do this and the second Instagram was like we have stories I was like all right peace out Snapchat I, yep exactly exactly <laughs> condense 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 <laughs> <laughs> but so uh I, you have all these things that you've been building on which is pretty cool as far as techniques and goes so where you are now from where you've been what is your favorite part of the process hmm. it's a lot um, of steps you're doing 
it's a lot of steps. My my ultimate favorite part is is I hate to say it's everything, but honestly, it, <laughs> it really is everything. The only thing I I hate really doing is like I don't know. I don't like cutting fabric. <laughs> Fair. That's, like That's the okay. Thing, <laughs> the small thing, but like I love researching because I'm very much a hype person. Uh -huh. If something's out and it's like awesome, I'm like, oh, gotta do it. You know, well, yep, oh, same. I gotta do this. Same. I, uh, and uh, <laughs> like for for Captain Marvel, for example, like oh, yes. I've, I've had it in my head. I was like, I'm gonna make that make that suit, <laughs> but when? But when? And then they released the trailer, and then I was like, well, just let's let's go let's now <laughs> so i That'll researched like a fiend and bought fabric so fast and it's it's like a whirlwind but <laughs> and i wish i wish i wouldn't let the hype allow you know get to me that much because i have plans <laughs> i should follow <laughs> my plans but when something's so exciting you can't help but dive into it yes but, um oh it's so exciting but uh, yeah i would definitely say like i love i love the research part of it sure um building up a i use pinterest as my main research tool nice. um pinterest and my my sketchbook i try to draw out as much stuff and i try to pin as much stuff as possible because the more images and the more words you have the easier it is to build right um, and so i love the i love the research process and, and the making process is awesome it's great and then once you're done the photos is also equally as fun because <laughs> <laughs> I have a really working, wonderful relationship with my photographer, and we have an absolute blast creating art with photos in my costumes. And so there's literally nothing about it that I don't like. I've grown so much from making costumes, um, but it doesn't feel like there's a certain thing that I necessarily dislike except cutting fabric. I hate cutting. <laughs> well, I mean, that's probably best that you're doing what you're doing then. <laughs> yeah. I like all of it. Well, good. I, I do. I'm also a hype man. I uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how to enjoy things moderately, so I don't either. I, I don't either. I go full force. <laughs> yeah, same. So I I I feel you there. So yeah. let's get hyped. And mm -hmm. uh, luckily, you have the skill set behind it. Me, I just run around yelling. I'm like, "Did you see that? That's crazy!" <laughs> and then you're the oh. person that walks into the room and I'm like, "Look at that! It's here now." <laughs> yeah, it's also really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> because I get really excited, and I I want to say, um, oh yeah, Aquaman Mira when they released the trailer for that earlier this oh, yeah. year, and I bought fabric for Mira's suit. I know, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> like damn it i did it again <laughs> You're like why you know, why why am i like this <laughs> I, I don't know and it's just because like that's how i that's how i like to share my love for the fandom and it's it's very strange that people you know instead of reading reading the books or or you know making a, a portrait of it or something like that like this is how i show my love for it and thanks for making something that i love yeah and, make that. and uh, i try to become the character <laughs> it totally Totally. It looks great. It's so cool. How how long did it take you to do the crown for Anastasia? Because it looks amazing, but it also looks like a lot of work. It really wasn't that bad. Really? It was, there was way more work into the research because that was the first time I ever used electronics. Uh, in my um, and I thought I was going to have to go total Kamaui buying Arduino boards and computer programming. And I thought I was, I was so worried about that because... I don't know nothing about that. Um, <laughs> I, yet. Once I kind of just, yet. No, I wouldn't like to learn. Trust me. I want to learn as much as I possibly can. There's nothing out there that I'm like, no, I don't want to learn that. That's right. I want to learn everything. <laughs> but depending on the outfit and what I'm wearing it to, it's different. But Fair. Um, honestly, the crown only took me about two weeks. Um, it's kind of a... It's kind of a, a weird thing. Um, they are uh, the lights inside of it are actually fairy lights that you can just buy off of Amazon Whoa. with a battery pack at the end. That's it. Really? Um, there's two sets of them in there, and then because the crown itself, it, it looks different on my head. But if you like look at it from the side, it's about an inch and a half deep, and so I'm able to stick battery packs into the crown and cover it oh. um, to where. It's just the it's just the front that you see, but mm -hmm. it looks like it's it's um, way smaller than it is. So once I figured that out, it wasn't too hard. That's awesome. See, yeah, that's what I mean. just process. I like how yeah. your brain works. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got these skills now to do anything. Mm-hmm. That's pretty great. Yeah, it's it's cool to know. Like my brain works in a def in a very much a pattern something with with numbers and your measurements and go out that way. And also my brain works into draping, which is like throwing fabric on a mannequin and cutting it here and cutting it there and pinning it and sewing it. And versus, you know, other people that their brains work differently, but yet we can come up with the same project with the right. same end point. It's just different points of start. I think that's fascinating. I love that. I agree. I agree. Is it, there's a, there's a ton of ways right to do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, it's pretty cool, and that, and uh, you know, just don't be afraid to get in there and do it. And I, yeah, and I like that you're the theme that keeps coming up is like you're constantly learning new things. I think that's really important. You, you know, have for a to. lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Like, don't you even to. if you or know nothing boring. about it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, get out there and like, don't be afraid to pick up new things, and then it just it's another fine addition to your collection. You know? Exactly. And I always say, don't be afraid to ask either. Like, Agreed. even even though you don't know how to do something, someone does. Exactly. And no matter who they are, still ask them. It's okay. Yeah. Don't I hurt. always tell people, if you have a question, ask me. I will not, you know, unless it's like some kind of, uh, you know, question that does not have anything to do with my outfit. That's right. <laughs> that, that <laughs> answering it to my own, um, you know, uh, reasoning. But, you know, I'm always here for, for answering questions. And I like helping people get and figure something out i have a lot of people that have attempted my ahsoka headpiece tutorial on youtube but they'll they're like well here's something i can't figure out they'll shoot me a message and i'll help them get over that hump you know never be afraid to ask yeah that's that's the the best part about a community you know helping Mm -hmm. each other out and everybody wins in the end pretty cool exactly pretty cool and uh, and i i have to go on the record and say that your you mentioned it before your queen amidala is like Trisha Beggar level, like, <laughs> oh. dude, you're. It is Queen Amidala. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. I, it it's really. I was very shocked how close I was able to get that screen accurate. Sheesh, it was amazing. <laughs> and then you you the ended up in Star search. Wars Insider. Congrats. I did. I That's did. Big. It's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you. And so dude. I was very surprised by that. I was like, holy cow. Okay. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> that that's um, validation. Like that's in you know yeah, that's in the is. that's in the history of Star Wars Insider now, yes, like how it you is. can you can look up old newspapers to see stories like for the rest <laughs> of time you can go to that issue of Star Wars Insider and see <laughs> you as Queen Amidala. I'm in, I'm in the back. That's right, <laughs> dude. Exactly. Yeah, it was it that that build was so interesting um, because I tried my hardest to use as much information from the actual creation of the gown. Sure. Which back when they made it in ninety eight was not a lot of note taking. Yeah, for <laughs> but real. if they took down notes, it was like the silks came from a special weaver from Japan, and I'm like, yeah. I can't find that. <laughs> well, that's just go, perfect. <laughs> that's just perfect. Gonna have to go to Joanne's and see what I can get. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's yeah. crazy. How long was that build? Um, you blah, 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 how long was that? Yeah, it, the, years. Uh, the Amidala build was nine months, Man. and the Anastasia build was six months. That's how I have to remember it. I'm like, the Amidala was a baby. Sure. <laughs> but it's because, it, it, <laughs> honestly, it was the headpiece that took me the longest, because it was a lot of trial and error. Like, sure. a lot. And so oh. that was a big chunk. Um, I'm actually getting ready to make another Queen Amidala outfit for Star Wars Celebration. Um, oh, however, I've seen some, some little snippets. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. I'm pumped. Um, and it's but it's not I would say up to that difficulty in my head, in my head this is my Sure, head. yeah. <laughs> um dif- difficulty level as that one. Sure. Um but it's still going to take me a long time, but I would say it would take me like 5 months versus like 9 months. Sure. Man, 9 months. Is that the longest you've spent on a costume? Like 9 what? months. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, it paid off. It did. It did. <laughs> it paid off, and then I turned around and made one that was six months. I was like, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> <laughs> like, it used to turn out so many, and now in a year I've put out two. But mm-hmm. Oh, look back at the in the day, I used to crank out, like, 12 costumes a year, but they were just costumes that would take me only two weeks to make or something like that. And I just found that I really didn't care about them as much as I cared about these big pieces. So I was like, well, I think there needs to be a shift. Yeah, and there was a shift, and I made a shift, and now I'm making these monstrosities. 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> Did I read correctly that you want to make all of the wardrobe? I would love to. <laughs> However, there are some that I'm like, no, that's just hideous. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, just <my> opinion. <laughs> that's just my opinion. But she has probably, I would say, at least three or four gowns that I would seriously like to create and make. And that's why I identify with Padme so much in Star Wars is is reasons being fashion and yeah. what she wears. And that's what attracted me to that character. So that's that's, you know, why I want to kind of go into those and make and make those outfits because I just love that character in those outfits. Oh, awesome. they're so good. But yeah, I would love to. Um however I don't really see myself making the the, the white suit from Geonosis anytime soon. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Fair. That's okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> There's an entire book by uh, uh, Jason Palmer. He's one of my favorite artists. He does con circuits every now and then, and it's just a sketchbook of all of her different outfits, and it's yeah, pretty cool because I, I like that. I, I like that you said. You know, she is fashion is a very big part of her character. I'm a massive Padme fan, yes. and uh, yes. you're doing you're doing it justice. You're doing it Hope justice. So. Hope so. Yeah, I mean it's in Star Wars Insider, so it's like not like you need <laughs> <laughs> validation is a thing of the past. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Dude, that's so cool. But uh, can you believe we've been talking for over an hour already? I can't. Versus all the different, all the uh, tech issues we had. Ah, uh, what tech issues? <laughs> oh, don't say that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's like, yeah, there's still time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this has been really fun. Uh, this was cool. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad I was able to, you know chat about things and not go too far off the edge because i can i can ramble all day oh dude i have a whole separate show (laughs) that i'll talk to you about in a minute (laughs) before uh that happens uh where can people find you online online mainly i tell everyone to go to my website which is just uh, jedimanda.com um but i am on um instagram facebook twitter youtube are the main ones that I use. Um, all at Jedi Manda. There you go. Find. Get that SEO. <laughs> yeah. I'm into it. So yeah, this was <laughs> awesome. And uh until oh. next time, man. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share and tell your friends. Let them know we got some cool stuff going on over here. Also, uh, I've finally broken down and made a Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, Special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, and Daryl. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you guys how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.